You know what really burns my popcorn? Bluetooth. I mean, sure, it's convenient, and those little wireless speakers are super handy, but I've got a lot of problems with Bluetooth. And now, <laughs> you're gonna hear about them. First off, guess which frequency band Bluetooth uses? Surely, it couldn't be 2.4 gigahertz, right? You know, the same one that every Wi-Fi router blasts out a signal on, making the band more clogged than a toilet at Chipotle? Oh wait, yeah, that's exactly what frequency it uses. So from the get-go, your little Bluetooth devices are already competing with tons of other wireless traffic, which can reduce your effective range. But hey, I'm just getting started. Why exactly is Bluetooth so range limited in the first place? Look, I, I know that whenever you're using something wireless, there's a trade-off between range and battery life since blasting a signal farther away sucks down more power. But what good is long battery life if I'm constantly having to worry if I'm too far away from my Bluetooth speaker? I mean, sure, sometimes it's not a big deal. But I don't want the signal to be so anemic that it just drops out if I take my phone into the other room because a few sheets of drywall are in the way. Come on! Oh, and while we're talking about drop-offs, let's move on to another common source of frustration, pairing issues. You'd think they could have made this simple, like Wi-Fi. Your gadget sees another gadget, like your phone and your router do, and they just, <laughs> they just connect. They just do it. But no, instead, you have to take the extra step of putting your devices in discovery mode before they can see each other. Turns out that unlike Wi-Fi, where you can usually just see a network automatically, you can't do this with Bluetooth unless you have some optional additional technology strapped on, like a pair of NFC transmitters. And once you deal with that, you get another headache because the powers that be created Bluetooth profiles, one for streaming music, one for phone calls, one for connecting your computer mouse, and so on. And while I get the reason they did this was to save battery life, here's the problem. None of these things have been tested to play nicely with each other, which is why sometimes your car's infotainment system will work better with your phone than it does with your friends. And to make matters worse, newer devices use what's called smart Bluetooth, where they don't even have to support every feature in a certain profile. While this is, again, supposed to extend battery life by allowing a gadget to turn off features it's not using, it makes it even more likely that a pairing problem will arise because of all these random profile combos. You also have the fact that some Bluetooth devices are supposed to be able to connect to multiple other gadgets at once, but are so low power that their little embedded processors can't handle the extra traffic, resulting in even more dropouts. Gah! But now, I'd like to talk about an issue that absolutely drives me nuts when I'm trying to watch video. Latency. Whenever I'm watching a great episode of TechWiki with Bluetooth speakers or headphones, it's like watching a badly dubbed kung fu movie because the audio track is so out of sync. And the basic reason this happens is because Bluetooth has relatively low data rates, yet again, to preserve battery life and hopefully improve range, meaning the audio data takes a little longer to reach your wireless speakers or headphones than it would with a wired solution. Your devices also have to do extra processing, which is often inefficient, because many operating systems <laughs> Android, haven't been well optimized for quickly dealing with Bluetooth audio. I mean, imagine that. A wireless device hasn't been optimized for a wireless audio standard. Are you kidding me? And yet they took away our headphone jacks. Who's in charge here? And yes, I know there are codecs like Aptix Adaptive that are supposed to cut down on latency, but it's often still noticeable due to core issues with the Bluetooth spec, whatever operating system your device is using, and the inherent limitations of wireless audio. <sighs> if the powers that be haven't optimized audio by now, it probably isn't surprising that Bluetooth is also notorious for not being the most secure wireless protocol either, as the myriad ways it has been implemented has made it tough for the industry to come together and figure out how to lock it down. Not to mention, it's had tons of vulnerabilities surface since it was first released. So, is there any way to make your Bluetooth experience a little better? Well, <sighs> the best things you can do are to keep all of your Bluetooth devices up to date and disable any features you won't be using in your device settings. Doing both of these things can cut down, potentially, on frustrating pairing problems. Otherwise, Maybe just use wired devices unless you really need the Bluetooth. I mean, having your headphones connected to your phone with a wire and a dongle, is that, it's not that big of a deal, guys. Come on. <sighs> Get over yourself. 
Speaking of things that could be a big deal, are you concerned about a data breach causing your credit card info to fall into the wrong hands? Then check out today's sponsor, privacy.com slash techquickie for a free, easy to use service that hides your credit card number. You see, it works by creating a virtual card number that's locked to whichever merchant you're shopping at. So even if the merchant gets hacked, the bad guys won't be able to just use your card anywhere they please. And if they try, you'll get a push notification so that you're always in the loop and can cancel the card immediately. Cards are super easy to set up. You just need to create an account, link your virtual cards to your checking account or debit card, add a limit, and <laughs> you're good to go. They've also got a browser extension that autofills information for you when making a purchase. Privacy.com is PCI DSS compliant, uses military grade encryption to secure your information and offers two factor authentication. And since they make money from merchants, there's no cost to you. In fact, if you sign up today, you'll get five bucks. Ha, <laughs> come on. Check it out today at privacy.com forward slash techwiki. That's privacy.com forward slash techwiki. Well, that's it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching. Like the video, dislike the video. Can you do both? <laughs> I don't know. Check out our other videos and comment below with video suggestions. Oh, and also, don't forget to subscribe and follow. That's a big list, but I think you can remember it. You're a smart cookie.